we finally did it. 250,000 subscribers to the Audiophiliac channel. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for everyone who ever watched the channel. I have so far produced 1,441 videos. Making these, this show is <laughs> the best thing I have ever done. And of course, I don't do it alone. I mean, I do it alone, but I need you guys on the other side of this equation. I talk to my camera, but you guys are out there all over the world. That still blows my mind that I could do this on an iPhone and reach people all over the world. So again, thank you. I'm sorry to repeat myself, but it's such an emotional thing for me to make this video about finally reaching this milestone. And yeah, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank my patrons over at Patreon. Thank you guys so much. This channel could not continue without your everlasting support. Speaking of thanking people, I definitely have to thank Mrs. Audiophiliac, whose presence and support through these years, these six and a half years of making videos has been incredible. So thank you, Mrs. Audiophiliac, AKA Robin. And of course, the Audiophiliac viewer system segment. Wow, I mean, I have seen literally thousands and thousands of my viewers' systems. I don't think, and I'm grateful for that. I can't express that enough that I know what my viewers are, you know, have at home. And even better, that you guys get to see each other's stuff. Where else, can, where else does that happen? <laughs> Nowhere, pretty much this is the place. So thank you guys for continuously sending me pictures. And lately, I gotta say, the pictures have, the quality of the pictures has been definitely going up. I'm gonna put the address on the screen right now. So if you have yet to participate, start snapping, send me some pictures jpegs only and definitely include the description of what's in the picture in the same email as the pictures before you hit send make sure it's all together in one tidy package in case you don't know my background i'll just run through this very quickly uh, i've done a lot of things in my life but the things that are relevant to this is i was a movie theater projectionist for a really long time so i had a whole movie theater size sound system at my disposal which was definitely a blast I sold high-end audio at Sound by Singer for 16 or 17 years, and that was basically my foundation for me becoming a reviewer because I had so much experience listening to different gear and listening to people's homes and all that stuff. So that was fantastic. I also worked as a producer for Chesky Records, David Chesky, who I just interviewed in the last episode of this show. That was huge. And then I became a writer, and I wrote for many, many magazines, print magazines, I wrote for Audio Magazine and Sound and Vision Magazine and Home Theater and Listener. Oh yeah, Art Dudley was a pleasure to work for. Lots and lots of magazines. And that was great. But when I moved over to CNET.com, my last job before starting the channel, I was there for like 18 years. I wrote thousands <laughs> of reviews and did all sorts of things there. And I actually started the Audiophiliac as a blog on CNET. So this thing has been going on for quite some time. I don't know if you guys have noticed that I'm slowing down a little bit in my rate of producing videos because I want to put more mm, heart and soul into each one. More of my feelings about the product I'm reviewing, if it's a review or the subject that I'm talking about. And I really want to push that this year of just go deeper and deeper about it. Well, because I consider myself, and I've always been, a subjective reviewer. It's how I feel about the product. I'm not pretending to be the most objective reviewer. Uh, no, not at all. I'm telling you about my experiences with the product in this room, with the type of music that I play, which I talk about in the reviews, how loud I'm listening. I frequently talk about that. Uh, the whole experience from my perspective, because that's all I have. <laughs> I just briefly want to talk about that years ago, in the early 2010s, I was writing for a magazine, a website called Inner Fidelity, hosted by a great guy, Tile Hertzens. And he was a 100% objective reviewer. He was really into measurements and correlating measurements to sound quality and all that stuff. And I 
wasn't, right? But we would have these friendly arguments, but you know, by phone all the time, and we eventually turn that into an article for Inner Fidelity, which I can't find. It's probably out there on the internet somewhere. So if you find it, let me know, and I'll I'll link to it. But uh, in 2012. Tyle and I did a debate on this uh, YouTube channel called uh, Home Theater Geeks, hosted by Scott Wilkinson. And uh, I looked at it this morning. It's really funny how it holds up. But the whole uh, subjective, objective debate was, was very well covered in this story. So yes, I will link to that. You can check it out. I, <laughs> I had a great time. Anyway, uh, the thing about uh, the people who do this by the numbers and stress measurements. I mean, I respect that as another view, another way of doing this, too, of doing reviews. I'm, I'm not opposed to it. But I think in terms of uh, getting, giving information to people who are potentially going to buy the products, that the subjective approach or the objective approach doesn't really guarantee results that if it's a rave review that you buy the product and you'll love the product. I, I don't think it works that way. I mean, it sometimes does, but it's not consistent. In other words, if I did a review and tell you how I feel about the product and it's a very positive review and you buy the product, well, a couple of things could happen. <laughs> you will buy the product and think, yes, Steve totally nailed it. That's one possibility. Or uh, Steve, eh, he didn't really get it that well. Or Steve totally screwed up and it's, he described nothing that's actually true about the sound of this product. Those are the possibilities. But the same is true for an objective review, a by the numbers, a measurement oriented review where you could buy the product, that, let's say it got a rave review, and you could buy the product and think, yes, the numbers prove this was good and it is good and I love it and I'll love it forever. That's a possibility. Or, you could buy it and think, mm, it's okay. <laughs> or you could buy it and think, no, it's nothing like what they described. So neither approach, subjective or objective reviewing, guarantees uh, predictable results for the people who buy the product based on the review. You know what? That's just the way it is. I, I wish there was a more secure, a straightforward way of doing this, but I can't think of how, how that would work. But I will say that um, people get back to me all the time and tell me that they bought products based on my review or my review among other reviews and are very happy with it. And that's gratifying to me that I am pointing out things of interest for people to buy. So if that's, if that's what I'm trying to do, I think I'm succeeding at least on that level. But mostly what I'm trying to do here with reviews is provide information, just enjoyment, like here's something cool that I want to tell you about. That's really the, my agenda here uh, with reviews. And of course I do lots of interviews and my conversations with Herb and thought pieces and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, I'm rambling on. I just, again, I want to thank you so much for being here, watching this show, helping me get to 250,000 subscribers. and. Uh, We'll see how this year goes, uh, 2024. I got a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline and uh, you're gonna start to see it in the weeks, in the coming weeks and months. So uh, that's all I got for today. Uh, my name is Steve Guttenberg, it's true. I am the Audiophiliac. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna support the channel, the best single way to do that uh, after you subscribe is to join my Patreon. The address is on the screen right now. And that's it. So see you next time.